Well then, gang, it's time once again for us here on the Pope on Film podcast to grab organized religion by the balls Good. and gleefully take a crap over it. Good. What's worse is because I have, I I have a little something to interject in this section. I think I've been waiting to find a good place to put it, but go ahead. Okay. the The worst part is uh, when I say gleefully, I mean we may have to start singing like in glee. Oh, we may okay. all start singing and be gay. Hot uh, patootie, I really love that rock and roll. Hot patootie, I really love that rock and roll. So there we go. Despacito. The only word I know is despacito. So I'm gonna keep singing despacito. Despacito, despacito, despacito. I don't know Spanish. Uh, it's time for yet again another no doubt wildly offensive installment of our crazy Christian book club Okay. this week unlike any of the other times that we've done the crazy Christian book club this week we have two books we're going to be talking about Yeah. well okay a one and a half but the first book the first book we're going to be talking about is the new book entitled The Maggie Bright. And it's a book written by Christian author Tracy Groot. Now, the book is called The Maggie Bright, and um, the book is basically a bland Christian fictionalized version of the Battle of Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. So if you're Christian and you go and see uh, Christopher Nolan's new movie Dunkirk, yeah. First off, you're going to love it because it's all, all white people. Yeah. <laughs> you're really going to love it. Because, not sure if you realize this, but the Battle of Dunkirk, yeah, all white people. There wasn't a single uh, uh, not minority in the entire Battle of Dunkirk. It looked, looked like an Abercrombie and Fitch ad. Yeah. So you'll be right at I home. don't know, man. Right around now, I just so totally do not need a war fucking movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Of any kind. Yeah. Yeah. A war I, movie. Oh, a war movie is just not that entertaining when North Korea can nuke us now. Yeah. At any time and in any place in our nation, too. And we and keep not poking them because we have a fucking idiot for a president. Yeah. But if if you're Christian and you go and see the movie Dunkirk and you wish that, that the movie was a bit crappier and maybe starring Kirk Cameron, then this book is for you. Okay? okay. It's called The Maggie Bryce. That's the name of the book. Now, um, this first pick in our Christian in our crazy Christian book club is a wee bit different than our normal pick. Uh, it's a bit different because I absolutely did not pick it for the book. Okay. Just to be clear, I could care less about the book itself. Instead, I would like to take some time to talk about the book's author. Her name, if, in case you forgot, her name is Tracy Groot. Okay. Tracy Groot. Okay. Can you imagine being a kid with the name Groot? Right around now, yeah. No, no, not right around now. I'm talking Even about then? like maybe like 15, 20, 30 years ago, and you're a kid, and your last name is Groot, and everybody's picking on you and like shoving you. And, like, pushing you into the lockers. Get out of my way, Groot. Man, Groot is lame. I hate Groot. Groot's never going to be popular. <laughs> okay. I see you where know? you're going now. Yeah. Man, like, if I was Tracy Groot, I would never stop saying it. <laughs> I would just constantly be saying, I am Groot, yeah. over and over again. Just constantly. Constantly be saying that. I would not stop saying that. Like, you couldn't pay me to stop saying that if I was <laughs> Tracy Groot. You know? Mm-hmm. What a great name to have right now. You know? 
And I had I had seen the, the comic book for the original appearance of Groot. Yeah, that was funny. That was first off, he was more like an oak tree, and he was a lot more tree like. Yeah, and he spoke in full sentences, and he was here to destroy the earth for some reason. Really classic sixties, like a tales to astonish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And now he's this cute, innocent, you know, vegan god. Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically. How'd that happen? Anyway, I was at work. I don't know, but I was at work and I saw the author named Tracy Groot in our Christian fiction section. That's basically it. I just wanted to rip on her name for a bit. Oh, that's cool. Now, that was, that was just a bit of a warm-up. The title that I really wanted to talk about is this next pick. Okay. And this is one that once it came in, I said, well, we got to talk about this. This has to be a crazy Christian book club. But I, I, I've got to do this, but I waited. I waited until when I thought what I thought was the right time. And I believe this time is now. So do you remember back when our crazy Christian book club pick took us into the bizarre Christian conspiracy world of Thomas Horn and Chris Putnam? I that was when we learned the shocking true and not at all bad shit crazy story about the Vatican's top secret project Lucifer which is that the Vatican is awaiting the arrival of giant alien overlords who will unite with the evil Muslims yes. and together with their antichrist pope they will bring about the apocalypse I mean duh everybody knows that okay everybody knows everybody knows and that's just common sense. So, so that that came. I don't from know if I I don't know if I remember it from the show or just weird bits and pieces I've picked up elsewhere. Well, we definitely did do it for the show. It was a while ago. It was quite a a while ago, but uh-huh. we did do it for the show. And it's a series of books too. It's a series of books that, for some reason are n- not in our freaking conspiracy theory section, which actually exists. We have a conspiracy theory section. Yeah. But instead, these weird Christian conspiracy books are just shelved in our regular Christianity section, right next to C.S. Lewis and Brave Joker victim Joyce Meyer. So it's a bit weird. How how frightening is that? It's weird. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's scary. And because because you know because you know that they are going under the natural assumption, and it is kind of a natural assumption for them that anything in the Christian section is just absolutely true. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Whereas if you put it in the conspiracy section, you can have some doubt if you want. Yeah, but I think putting these in a Christian in the Christianity section just adds so much more credibility to those books than they deserve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a symbol of Christianity's slow transition from a nice religion full of kind hearted people into an alt right jack off club full of angry snowflake hating racist yeah. nutballs. So that brings us to our second pick. In our crazy Christian book club, um, it's written by retired firefighter turned prophet Mark Taylor. Okay, I've been waiting. I've been waiting to do this. I've just been waiting and waiting to do this. We have so many copies of this at work. Mark Taylor's brand new batshit insane book, uh, the title of which is a bit of a long one, but it's called The Trump. Prophecies. Oh my god. The astonishing true story of the man who saw tomorrow and what he says is coming next. Yeah. This should come as no surprise. This book is published by Defender Publishing. Wow! Surprise, surprise! The same company that published uh, Horn and Putnam's batshit Christian conspiracy theory books. 
Now, it's easy for people to say, oh, yeah, I predicted President Trump. I knew Trump would be elected. I just knew that this would happen. I knew we would get here. It's easy for people to say that. But it's another thing entirely to say that, oh, yeah, I predicted President Trump. I knew he was going to win because in 2011, God came to me and told me that Trump was God's chosen candidate, chosen by God to lead his people. Mm hmm. Because that's mm -hmm. what uh, allegedly happened to retired firefighter Mark Taylor. God to came to him and told him that Trump was God's chosen candidate who will unite the armies of God against the forces of evil. And that's why, that is why I say, even if you give me absolute definitive proof that that God exists, yeah, I, I'm still not kneeling to it. It's like kneeling to Loki. Yeah, <laughs> you know. What were you saying? I was saying unless you're the Simpsons or Rage Against the Machine, there was no way you were able to predict that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Simpsons can predict anything. Yes, that's just yeah. Rage, Rage Against the Machine. Mm-hmm. They're getting a bit old now, though. God, that was so long ago that Rage Against the Machine was was important. Now it's like <laughs> ask your money back because the machine took your dollar, <laughs> or something to that effect. <laughs> you need to work on it. So yeah, this guy is a prophet chosen by God. Yeah. God has chosen him to tell people the future. And surprise, surprise, it's pretty dumb shit. Yeah. But people so are going to believe it just because it's in the fucking Christian section. Yeah, yeah, this is the worst section for this to be in. So, here is God's message, everybody. Just to let you know. Trump is God's chosen candidate. He's going to make abortions illegal. He's going to end the separation of church and state. Okay. He's going to uh, he, he's, uh, he's also apparently going to arrest politicians who disagree with Trump. Okay. That shouldn't come as a surprise because Trump has already arrested thousands of elite, satanic, child-sacrificing pedophiles. How, how does anybody read that and think that that's a good idea? I, I don't understand that. If that was Obama, I would be outraged. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand how Christians can say we need to stop Islam because Islam is trying to take over the government and force people to believe in their crazy religion. That's why we Christians need to take over the government yeah. and force everybody to believe in our God, the magical white bearded man in the sky. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's you know, like the things that they hate about Islam are exactly yeah. what they are doing right now. Yeah. But do, do Christians not? They don't believe in history, do they? They don't believe in what? History. Hardly. In, in, a lot of times, once upon a time, uh, Americans were, you know, in England, right? We're part of all of that. Right. And there was like wars, and there was like the, and we're going to force you to believe in this specific religion. Right. You had yeah. to. You had to become like, a member. Were going to be imprisoned. You were yeah. going to. I mean, you'd be put to death if you didn't believe in Christianity. So that's essentially what they want now here in America. You yeah. had to become a member of the Church of England to remain an English citizen. Yeah. Right. So, like declare a official religion, and if you don't, you're not a, a citizen. Right. So, but I guess history doesn't matter to American Christians. No. <laughs> Yeah. Like, remember when we went to church? I forget if it was in Sacramento or if it was here, and the preacher was all, there is more proof that Jesus existed than, than, than there is proof that George Washington existed. Like, and, there, like that, and there isn't, and there's true. a lot of room for doubt whether Jesus existed at all. 
I'm pretty sure he's he existed because I let's saw be, his, uh, let's, I saw his LinkedIn. Let's be for real, okay? Oh, How Jesus. the fuck do you get to claim that you know some guy is historically real when you don't know what his fucking real name is? You don't yeah. know what his birthday is. You don't know when he was crucified. You don't know anything don't know about he, him, but you're saying he, he, he is historically accurate and real. Yeah. You don't even know what his middle name is. I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, what does it stand for? It stands, it stands for Howard. I thought, it was, I thought it was heck of a tap dancer. Is what I always thought. And then, Jesus, another, heck of a tap dancer. Another thing, though, is what. No, Bat- no, it stands for Howard. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. I got to do this. Jesus Howard Christ. It's Jesus Howard Christ, oh, right? Because because the true name oh, of God is Howard. Okay. No. So so if you don't Christ. name your kid directly after you, if you don't want him to be a junior, then you give him a different yeah. first name, and then you give him the middle name of your father. And we know that it that that God the Father is Howard because it's in the Lord's Prayer. Ha- Howard be thy name. <laughs> that really got Natasha, just to let you know. Yeah. That one did it for her. Yeah. It was a, it was a so, long setup. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a, it was a good setup. Um, so, um, Trump is going to arrest all the politicians who disagree with Trump. He's yeah. going to destroy the Illuminati once and for all. Okay. Thank God. I'm so sick of the Illuminati. I'm so sick of the Illuminati. I'm so sick of Doctor Strange, Mister Fantastic, Professor X, yeah, and some Mariner. They shot the needs- Hulk to another planet. That was so not yeah. cool. Yeah, exactly. So sick of that. So sick of that. You were supposed and- to be his friends. And here's here's a here's a, a a good thing. Thank God Hillary didn't win. Stop stop spamming the cheese into your mouth, Maxwell. No, stop at all. Thank God Hillary didn't win because if she would have won, then her plan was to close every church and turn them into mosques. Okay, that was her plan. That was going to be the <laughs> what she was going to do on like day one. <clears throat> I, so people, yeah, people need to buy this book. They need to buy it. Uh, they need to buy two copies, maybe four copies. You need to go out and buy five copies. I'm saying it because this book tells you the truth, and not because we have an insane amount at work. I'm saying this because everyone needs at least eight copies of this book. But let's point this out, okay? Who's the author of this book? Huh? Who's the author of this book? Retired firefighter turned chosen prophet Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor. Let us point out clearly Mark Taylor got a publisher and Milo didn't. True. Mark Taylor got a publisher. He got his book actually published. And yeah. Milo couldn't. He had to self-publish his book. For the last couple of weeks, I have been flipping through the Trump prophecies, looking up reviews of the Trump prophecies, going to some right-wing sites and seeing what they have to say about the Trump prophecies. And so it surprised. It surprised people. Yeah. When my store manager came in to receiving and saw the cover for the first time and said, oh my God, the Trump prophecies? What's this about? And I was able to perfectly explain to her what the book, The Trump Prophecies, was about. Okay, well, it's about a retired firefighter named Mark Taylor. And in 2011, he was visited by God. She was like, oh, my God, that sounds crazy. And also, how do you know that? (laughs) It's a long story. Let's just say I I know stuff. (laughs) So, yeah, I threw her off by that. Yeah. But there's two new picks. From the Pope on Films, Crazy Christian Book Club, a book yep. written by Groot, and Donald Trump gets hand jobs from Jesus. <laughs> uh, and if you're looking for a copy of the Trump prophecies, unfortunately, a massive crap ton of the Trump prophecies 
are currently available at your local bookstore. So pick up a copy if you're a fan of bullshit, and we will see you next time for more crazy Christian book club picks here at the Pope on Film Podcast. Yeah. And cut. Cut. Good stuff. Well, wait, I was going to introduce something. Uncut, uncut. Oh, oh yes, 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 uncut, uncut, <laughs> uncut. Sorry, I was talking about Jesus. Yeah, huh? uh, just before huh? the show, just before the show, um, a friend of mine started getting into a good conversation on evolution on his Facebook wall. The bitch always does that. Always a good conversation starting just before the show, and I can't jump in. But, yeah, but. So, you know, I'm sure that happens to you with an article or something like that every now and then. And, like, you're trying to get everything ready for the show. And you, you, I'll just read a sentence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. So this was, this was concerning evolution. And I noticed how, and I, I, I like, kind of just came to me how the discussion of evolution the discussion of Christianity in general or religion in general or the Trump presidency. Yeah. They're all basically the same stupid arguments. You know, it's a lot of, well, you don't know. You don't know that you weren't there. Yeah. You weren't at the origin of the world, so you don't know. So this is all just a made up theory, you know, Hold on. or, or it's, or it's, you know, we can demonstrate all the things that are wrong in the Bible. Yeah. But you don't know, you don't know what God is trying to say. You don't know. You don't know if there's a God, you don't know. You, you know what I mean? And it, it's like, okay, well, Manafort took money from the Russians Flynn took money from the Russians and was working as an ambassador for Turkey. Jeff Sessions met with the Russians. Donald Trump Jr. met with the Russians. Kushner were, met with the Russians. There's a backdoor private server communicating with the Russians that none of nobody in our, but you don't know. You don't know. Just because you know those things, you don't know he. Did. It's all the same fucking argument. Yeah, but you don't have proof. Yeah. Yeah, but where's the proof? Where's the smoking gun? Which like, there one is no do you want? Gun. There's just there's just hundreds of small pieces that when you put them together is a big ass gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, what is she? It's a big eating? picture thing. Is that another rubber band? Um, so, yes, I just wanted to get that out there, and it seemed during the crazy Christian book well, club. It's, yeah, it's a bunch of smaller parts that equal that big smoking gun. We have to see the bigger picture, which they can't because they're probably flat earthers, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm I can't even flatter. believe they're a thing. I can't believe that they're uh, a they thing are. that oh, we're God, actually talking I about. I had a whole discussion in uh, my class, like one of the last days of class, uh, one of the students has a friend who's a flat earther and would argue and argue. And they were like, here, watch this YouTube video. And she was like, I can't, I can't waste my time on this. I don't believe it at all because there's nothing to back up this theory that Earth is flat. Like, but they yeah. exist. She was like, yeah, no, they exist. I was like, holy shit. I've never met one. You yeah. know one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Crazy. they're they're there, and it's apparently they're growing in number. Yeah, and that's frightening because that's like saying gravity doesn't exist. So right. some people do. Well, flat earthers do, in fact, say that gravity doesn't exist. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. Holy shit! It's wind pressure. Well, I still say if the Earth was flat. The cats would have knocked everything off by now. <laughs> so I'm with you on that one. It's obviously not flat. Okay, well, I can't find it now. What are you looking for? Um, the, his his art his he was saying the evolution thing. Um, I saw a, a, a thread 
about the evolution and how he had posted this. It was on Pinterest. Yeah. He posted something on Pinterest and then somebody was like, oh, well, if we descended from monkeys, blah, blah, blah. And like, she just went off and he was like, all right, we're going to go through this point by point. And I want to yeah. reply from you. So like he addressed her for first point, gave uh, sites. He was like, here's a citation for this fact. Now, uh -huh. you know, I want your response before I move on to the next one. And so she waited all like a week before she responded and yeah. with the same bullshit, the same initial response. And he was mm -hmm. like, OK, you're going to try to get around this here. Here's all my points. He gave he addressed every single one of her points with a backup knowledge, like fucking Harvard educated type shit. And yet she still argued. And then he went back to try to see if uh, she had addressed anything. Yeah. She completely deleted her shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like he gave facts. She couldn't give yeah. facts. You know, because it's a bunch of bullshit because they're not open to being wrong. They, the way that they believe they're so firm in their belief. God, I'll have to go look at my book, but there's a, there's a psychology term for it that they're so firm in their belief. They refuse to even be open to discussion of right. anything else. Yeah. Even if you're backed up by yeah. the facts, it can yeah. be right in their face. Here's well, the it's, color red. it's, it's no, the definition bullshit. of delusional. I mean, holding on to a belief when all evidence to the contrary says it's not true. I'm not going to listen to you if you tell me it's a cat. Yes. But, yeah. cat but also, a when, you're, when you're arguing with somebody who does Idiot? not believe in evolution, the argument becomes about so many other things. What they're really arguing is they just don't believe in science at all. Because they'll start well, the discussing the Big talking. Bang and shit, and the Big Bang has nothing to do with evolution. They'll be talking about volcanoes, and it's, well, that's great. The formation of the planet has nothing to do with evolution. You know? Well, I mean, and what they're, what they're doing they is they're just arguing all science. And you want to argue all science, then I think that these people should be denied all of our science and technology. They get cancer, they get sick, you know? Sorry, yeah. pray to your God, because science doesn't exist. It's something you don't believe in. We yeah. can't give it to you. That's, that's how I feel about it. I just, oh, makes me mad. Wow, we got Natasha for a while there. That was, yeah, that was, that was special. That was like a. Yeah, we started discussing science. Science isn't my forte because I believe in the power of Jesus. <laughs> now, you believe in facts. I'll believe in the Bible. Uh, and they're like, okay. oh, just transitional species. Transi we are transitional species. <laughs> yeah. We are still evolving. Everything is a transitional species. They want to argue against facts and evolution and stuff. Ask them how exactly mitochondria came to be inside of a bureaucratic cell. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Hey, stop. Jesus. I'll stop saying I'm Jesus. just saying, ask them how that came to be. Because uh, for all intents and purposes, mitochondria <clears throat> should never have been able to exist inside of a human cell. But it does. And it should technically be a bacteria. And yet it's there. And it's passed down from mother to child. How does that happen? It shouldn't have. But it did because of evolution. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So. I didn't know she had poop. I'm sorry. I didn't know she had poop either. Emerald's changing the baby. Uh, have fun with that. And probable cut right here. This would be a good okay. cut spot. 